Hi, I'm Massimo Capra, and I travel the world in search of good food and interesting places. Today, I'm in San Agustin, Florida, America's oldest city. There's so much history here that this town is at the time to perfect this gastronomy. I'm going to meet up with Chef Head Hill, and together we're going to cook up a meal that will make the founders of San Agustin proud. Mm, but with all this talk about food, it's making me hungry, just like my friend Maximo here. All right. All right. Florida is known as the Sunshine State, and they have lots of alligators here. But if you want to see them in a safe environment, do like I did. Go to an alligator farm. I came here to see their biggest attraction, Maximo. Maximo is over 15 feet, over 1,200 pounds. He's a massive animal. That's a big beast. Uh, and he's still fairly young. He's in his 40s right now. He could probably live twice that long. Hey, what's the deal here? Everything big is called Maximo. Must be something about that name. Look at this guy. Can you believe he's Maximo's baby? Glad you've upset dad over there. <laughs> I better get rid of it. There you go. Hang on, eh? You got it? Okay. Oh, I know. That's in your eye. I <laughs> got him right in the eye. Let me see if I can edit. Oh. 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 <laughs> I also visited the marine land because I heard of this dolphin named Sonny who can paint. Hopefully his abstract portrait of me might be worth something someday. There's nothing better than playing with dolphins and Sonny loved to play catch. I think we bonded. I love dolphins and they're very playful and they like to play practical jokes. They splashed me. <laughs> San Agustin is America's oldest city and as I took a walk around I could see that there was a lot of Spanish influence in the architecture. The waterfront was very picturesque, and just a few steps away, the historic colonial district took me back in time. Many of the old buildings are still in existence, and being a tourist area, I managed to pop into a number of shops to get some snacks. I really enjoyed my walk through San Agustin, but now it's time to meet Chef Ed, and he asked me to meet him by the waterfront. I'm really looking forward to seeing what he's got in store for me. Whoa! Hey, Al, over here. Hey, Ed, how are you? <laughs> Good, I'm glad to see you made it, Brian. Hey, what do you think of this weather, friend? Oh, this is fantastic. Fresh air, sunshine, a beautiful, beautiful feel in this town. This looks so beautiful. I mean, what's with the Spanish influence, though? Well, I'll tell you what. In the 1500s, we had uh, Spanish explorers who came into town and in, into this area. They were looking for gold. They were looking for the Fountain of Youth. Wow, Fountain of Youth. Oh, yeah. I haven't right. heard that in a long time. But what do they eat here? I mean, well, uh, Massimo, we got fish. Yeah. We, we got, uh, well, Florida is one of the largest cattle producing states uh, nice in, in the United States. People don't realize that. I'll tell you what. Let's go to the markets. Okay. Let's see what they've got out here. Let's see what, what kind of thing, uh, what we can put together, okay? For sure. That sounds, that sounds wonderful. Let's, Let's go. Let's go. Ed didn't waste any time. We jumped in his car and we drove to his favorite vegetable farmer. You talk about the freshest you can get. This is one of my favorite, favorite farm stands in Florida. Look, these things are grown right here. These are gorgeous, man. I mean, no refrigeration. Fresh, eh? All fresh. <laughs> You're not going to see this in your local grocery store. No, that's not for a sure. bit. I mean, look at these Brussels sprouts. Nice Amazing. and tight. Oh, they're firm, man. Eh? Oh, beautiful. Oh, yeah. Okay, well, what, what do you say we get two of these? Sure. Well, these are these are called Ponderosa lemons. These are 
I get, they're a little bit like a citron, and it's sweet on the inside. They got a citron, yes. I'll take the the rind and, and zest it, and that way right. you get pure lemon flavor without having any acidity. That's big, eh? Hey, man, this is kale. That's oh, a bigger is, bunch. Yeah, that's a beautiful kale, my friend. Oh, come on. Oh, I'll tell you what, I'm thinking about marrying this kale. This one's so gorgeous. You're kidding me. <laughs> well, I Should we get it? Honey, we need to take you home. <laughs> okay. I see some nice cabbage over here. Now, I'm going to show you something we used to do as kids when we were out here. Fishing. Right. And sometimes, you know, you're a poor kid yes. growing up in the country and you just can't afford a mask. Okay. And we would sometimes take this <laughs> and, and become cabbage man <laughs> and go around to scare <laughs> people in our you cabbage look like a mask. Hockey the Sunshine State is known for its citrus, so I picked up some oranges for myself for later. <laughs> <laughs> these are red navel. Yes. And these are regular navel. And these are regular navel. And this says Honeybell. I never heard of this. Now, one. Honeybell, it's a kind of a tangerine orange cross. Nice. Really very sweet. We, we probably need to get four or five of those. Hey, Masa, what are you doing? Can't you wait? I just, uh, I can't wait. Oh, man. This is so juicy. Look at this. Wait, no wonder they got all the juice, uh, orange juice here, huh? Now that's great. Mm. I have to do it the old style here. Yeah. That? Mm. <laughs> anyway, oh, well, that's nice. Let's pay for this okay. before they throw let's us out. Yeah. Okay, I think we got what we need, Mark. Oh, this is a big box, man. It's getting heavy by the second. Hey. All, right. Put it. Hi. All right. All right. Let's go. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. I got a surprise for you. Talk to me. Have you ever had boiled peanuts? Never. You got me with that one. Boiled chickpeas, that's Come it. On, Lupini friend. beans. Have you ever had that? I don't know if I can go on. <laughs> I'm starting to get all misty and sad. Why don't you, uh, why don't you try one? Up? Now you got to crack these things open. Ah, okay. I'm not going to okay. eat that. Oh, look at that. Just the peanuts, yeah. Hey, these are good. Yeah, I thought you'd think. like beans. I thought you'd think so. All right, I'm going to have another one. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. Mm. This has got to be one of my favorite purveyors in town, and I have to tell you why. These guys get their fish directly off the boat. You can't get fresher. If you look at the eyes on these fish, I they're all see. very clear. I brought you the fish place because I'm looking for sheep's head. They feed on the things that we pay a lot of money for, okay. crabs, uh, they feed on, on crustaceans, right. they, they even eat some barnacles. As a result, they have a taste that is very much like what they eat. You're going to find that you're just absolutely surprised. And, and a lot of people will be because they don't want to, they avoid the fish for one reason. It's, it's got two proper names. One is sheep's head. Right. And that's because of the teeth. They're very st right. strange teeth. The other is convict fish. <laughs> and either one of them doesn't sound good on a menu. Did, did they get lucky with either name? Possibly. I want you to notice that it, that you hear as this knife is going through the back of the fish, you hear it's clicking against the bone. That's a sign of perfect technique, absolutely. Oh, I see. He's, uh, he's really good. Fletcher is really amazing. I'll tell you what, man. Yeah. He is a fish killer. <laughs> well, <laughs> he's, he's a deep flesher. He's a deep flesher. <laughs> Thank you very much. We're going to head so out. Thanks man. All right. Yeah. Bye, Fletcher. Have fun tonight. All right. Man. Bye. Bye. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. It was time to cook, so we headed to Ed's kitchen. Massimo, uh, welcome to my, uh, my galley kitchen here. <laughs> this is quite see, big in here, isn't yeah, it? Yeah. Let's, let's put it this way. Most of the guys, we, uh, we kind of sign a marriage contract. It's no don't talk, don't tell once you get really, in this yeah? space. Yeah. But anyway, Massimo, what, what we did yesterday, fantastic shopping. Uh, we got these beautiful Brussels sprouts that we, right. that we got right. at the county line, uh, right from the field, this wonderful kale. Yep. I, and what I want to do today also, I want to introduce a, an ingredient that came over with the Spanish settlers, which was they brought the pigs into this country. And, and then, uh, and to this day, you find wild pigs wandering, you know, through the forest. And we're going to use pork, and we're going to use pork in two different ways that are historic uh, to the area. And, okay. And we're going to work with a, a little bit of sherry vinegar. The Spanish were very famous for their sherries. Right. And as they brought them over, they wouldn't keep as well. And so oftentimes <laughs> they wound up making sherry vinegars out of them. Well, so, and that's the, uh, that's mullet, the, smoked, the smoked mullet. mullet. Now, we're going to do a little bit of, of a surprise thing with this. And, and that is that 
I want to take the smoked mullet, right? And I'm going to use this as a topping, mixed with crab meat, okay, on top of a a, a Creole spiced uh, sheep's head fish. Okay, well that that oh that's good, that's wonderful. Yeah. I like that. You know what? Uh, one good thing about a small kitchen, everything is at hand. Huh? A small kitchen also means tight working conditions, but we managed. I don't want any centimeters in this kitchen. No? Yeah, they crawl around, they creep me out. While I prepare the green stuff, Ed worked his magic on the mashed potatoes. You know, the, the starch corpuscles or whatever you, would, you want to call them, coated with a nice amount of butter before you start to add your, your milk or your cream. Or Oh, I couldn't agree with you more. And uh, what will happen is that keeps your potatoes from getting gluey, getting to where, you know, you get that thing where they lift out of the pan like a batter. <laughs> Okay, enough already. You're making me hungry. <laughs> I hope so. We're going to have enough yeah, food. Yeah, here. that's a lot. Then. Got my kale washed. Always wash your leafy green vegetables. They come from the field. They have dust on it. They have sand. They have bugs in it. Passengers. That's what I call them. What do you call them? <laughs> extra protein. Extra, extra protein. Okay, well, that's good, actually. Okay, when you buy Brussels sprouts from the farmer, okay, they have a lot of these leaves here, like the one that just fell. So the first outer leaves you must remove. These ones are generally just dry and woody. So you just want to make sure you remove them all like that. And then you're left with a beautiful, clean Brussels sprout. Look, this is so firm. You hear that? That is nice and hard, okay? Then you can remove the bottom. And in my case, what I'm doing now is I'm going to julienne them. So I'm opening them up like that, and then I just Ooh, this is a nice little knife. See? Now, when you have them done like this, you can just saute them a little butter, a little garlic, olive oil if you don't like butter, pork fat, pork so, fat? <laughs> bacon, you know, <laughs> raisins. You notice he looks at me when he says pork fat. Almonds. <laughs> Ed's kitchen is very small, and when a kitchen is this small, you really have to pay attention to where everybody's hands are. Hey, you know, in tight quarters, when you hear that sound, it's not so special. Hey, Massimo, what we're going to do here is we're going to do a dish. It's going to be pork chops, uh, pork chops with two sauces, right. and sautéed kale. Just Cuts like, like butter, huh? Slices. That knife is so sharp. <laughs> Listen, what are we going to do with the cabbage? Oh, I got that to make masks out of them, Cosmo. We, we oh, really? Uh, the kids love that. This is nice. Look at that, a big bowling ball. <laughs> Whoa! Whoa! <laughs> this is the South. You've seen the waste mines around here. I possess one of those myself. Just call it prosperity. <laughs> <laughs> and we're going to season up our pork chops nice. We want to always season your food. You're going to get that in there. You hear that, that sizzle? That's, that's where the meat's talking to you? I'm telling you, hey Ed, you're doing right by me. And and that's something. When you cook also, you, you should be cooking with all your senses. Are yeah. you adding any butter? Not at this stage. Look at that, eh? Not at this that's stage. exactly what you want. I tell you what, while that's going, yeah. let's move these to the back. Yep. Oh yeah. There you go. Oh yeah. Smoking. 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 Mmm, just listening to those pork chop sizzle made me so hungry. All right, we got these babies started. Push them, slice them around, and you grab them. Move them. Grab that one in the back, bring it up. Yep. Okay. And one more time. How do you do one of the people in here every day? <laughs> That's the same, man. Okay, I'm going to add these onions right now. Perfect. I'm going to put them on either side. Can we season them a bit? Lots of onions, man. Yeah, lots of onions. Frying the pork chops was like playing a chef's version of musical chairs. Back and forth, back and forth. But you know what? They were cooked to perfection. Now it's, this is how it's done in the, the real world, folks. <laughs> okay, go. Left. Yeah. There you go. So stir those onions around a little bit. Now look at that. See that? That's the money set. Yeah. Right there. The Ed, all of a sudden, decided to pay a little tribute to our Spanish-influenced pork. <laughs> Olé! <laughs> Got two cloves of garlic for each pan. Garlic. Garlic. Give it a nice smash. More. Give this another, another little crush. There's nothing like garlic to spice up the flavor of any dish. 
we had all the right ingredients. Butter, onions, garlic, and great chops. There was just one more spice to include. Now I'm going to do, add a sprig of rosemary. Change one. Okay. A little sprig of rosemary. And the burn. The rosemary, the rosemary, and heavy cream. Ah, beautiful. That's like in Italy, man. Okay, yeah, this is a real good here. Real brown. Okay, now what I'm going to do, sherry vinegar. The sherry vinegar gave off such a hypnotic smell that I just wanted to dig in and eat right from the frying pan. We're going to take a little bit of stuff off the bottom of the pan there. Just come up. Okay, now we're going to add some garlic. Right on, dude. Okay. Okay. Beautiful. Ed invited a few friends to taste our cooking, but I couldn't believe how big the portions were. They were in for a real colonial style meal. Okay, so we do the Francization of uh... That's it, Montebeur. <laughs> That's the way. Look at that sauce. The sherry sauce mixture just covered the pork chop with a delicious golden coat. How great is this? No one but two great pork chops. This is the ultimate colonial dish. I guess in colonial times they brought meat before vegetables. Our cream sauce on the second pork chop was so savory, but we needed to add the kale. So we sauteed some with butter just to accent the dish. We're gonna nice saute with it with butter. There you go. Oil. Nice. What a mess. <laughs> we made a Ma bloody Look mess. You, Unbelievable. You guys into a guy's Unbelievable. Type of thing? <laughs> that does it. A little taste from the local market, and the dish was ready to go. Here we are. Hello, hello, everyone. I'm glad to see you can make it. These are pork chops with two sauces. One. Is, uh, they're both from recipes from colonial, uh, the Spanish colonialists who were here. Uh, one of them is a pork chop with uh, onion and sherry vinegar and butter. The other is with a uh, cream, rosemary, and garlic. And so, and then we've sautéed some kale with that. That was a lot of pork chops on those plates, but you know what? They really liked it. Now it was time to cook the ship's ad. Those fillets look so creamy and smell so good, I just couldn't wait to taste them. All right, Massimo, this is the fish that we got yesterday. Beautiful. Look at how creamy this meat looks. This looks so perfect. Look at that. It has a nice creaminess to it. It's nice and firm. You know, I mean, this is uh, it's delicious. It smells like heaven. It smells like fish. Fresh fish. Delicious. He was still going like this when we got it. I tell you what, I've, you've been going like this since I met you. Oh, God! <laughs> <laughs> when you're doing fish in a pan, tilt the pan over so that the oil yeah, goes no, on the other end. That way you're not going to splash yourself. And then bring it back in and let it go over there. Okay. <laughs> okay, yes. Yeah. Now we can add butter to the pan and be fairly confident that we're not going to okay. burn it. All these people torturing food on the grill, they drive me exactly. insane, man. And you see, it'll loosen itself up. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, because you started with a hot pan. So naturally it will stick anyway, but then it releases. Exactly. That, that's gorgeous. I love that. Look at that, it's just perfect. Let's see if we can flip that over now. Yep, do it. Do it. Especially these thin pieces, because now you're starting to see them get white around the edges. Ah, yes. The ship's head fillet were nice and golden. In other words, perfect. See? All you have to do is sear it once. Just flip it once. This is just fish. It's gonna cook in like a minute and a half. These ones are the crispy bits that every chef sees. Mm. Oh man, it's good. Let's move these to the oven for a second. How's that sound? Okay. That's your oil? <laughs> Yeah. Yep, that's your oil. Oil and butter, right? Oil and butter. You got butter over there? Uh, I got butter over here. You want to butter me up? <laughs> sure, Gassimo. Got you. Yeah. look great today. Gassimo? <laughs> that's, that's my nickname. You look wonderful today. You know, my, my kitchen, 
My kitchen is a massacre. <laughs> okay, it's a democracy by me. Okay, no onion, no garlic, nothing, huh? Yes, so it's for now. To go along with the fish fillets, I started on the chopped Brussels sprouts, and I added the rind of the ponderosa lemons. Look at that. Absolutely gorgeous. Pretty, pretty, pretty. Because uh, the lemon, when, when you have the lemon, you have to be careful because if it's boiling, what you're going to get is you're going to grey up the... Uh, right, exactly. You're going to grey up the greens. The greens. Let's put, put a couple of spoons of this rice in here. After and we're there. Okay, we start going to the plate with it. I love those lemons. Good deal like that. Mm, they're nice. We mix the Brussels sprouts with the rice and form the delicate bed for the ship set filet. You like to cook with cream, huh? Well, I guess sir, when you have, have this many cattles in this uh, in this uh, region. Cream is, is kind of a natural thing to put in. Well, it you know, is, and uh, oftentimes, you know, you're, when you're in a restaurant, you're in a kitchen, and even yeah. at home, you're looking for things that, you, that can come together very quickly. This is the smoked mullet. This is the smoked mullet. It's been thoroughly deboned, but I'm sure somebody will find a little bone anyway, because it always happens. All right, and we're going to finish it with a little bit of, of that tomato dice. Now, let me take my spoon out. Ooh, that's tasty. Like, take it so they can see some of the fish. Yeah, still on right there. Maybe a little visible here. Yeah. These fillets look great. I'm sure that our guests are gonna love it. Yeah, that, that's pretty. Come on. Wait, these guys, they had double pork chop. I did. That way we get the contrast of color. Well, there we go. Yeah, I hope, they're, I hope they're ready for this one. Yeah, let me... Oh, look at this. Mosmo is more. getting friendly now. This is a real Southern-inspired dish with a touch of Cajun. All right. There you go. Okay, well, this is uh, this is our last dish over here. This is a sheep's head. And yesterday when uh, Mr. Ed over here told me we're going to go and get some fish heads, I said, what? No, ship sad. Ship Sorry. Yes. When he told me we we're gonna go for some ship sad, I said, you know what? I thought you were going for fish, you know. And then he comes up with this uh, delicate, delicious fish. I know you guys might be bored about it, but you know, I mean, I really think that this is really good. Bon appetito! Yet again, save some for me. <laughs> It's been a pleasure having you here. This well, is, uh, listen, thank you for having me here and for showing me all this beautiful stuff. Well, you know what, Masma, I, I learned a little something from you as well. What I have you learned? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's it. Those are, those are flavored mustaches. <laughs> all right, enjoy. Well, thank you thank, so much. Thank you for having me here. Bye now. It's a pleasure. Ed Hill loves his local ingredients. He prepares his food to honor the rich history of St. Augustine. He goes out of his way to find the freshest produce, even if it means driving quite a ways out of town in order to get them straight from the farm. One thing we should all learn is we shouldn't judge a fish taste by his name. As I learned, ship's head fish tastes great. Bon appetito!